This course will look at how to customise your analytics account. Then we will talk about goals and e-commerce. And finally we will cover checking your setup. In the next few slides we are going to delve into a recommended setup for Google Analytics. When you create your Google Analytics account, it is important to ensure that you add the correct code for your site. If your site contains multiple subdomains, such as adwords.google.com or analytics.google.com, you will need to add a slightly different code than the default one given. By clicking the Edit button next to your profile and then check Status at the upper right of the screen, you will get access to your code. Tick the relevant radio button and apply the code to every page of your site. Using the example of Google, we wanted to split our tracking between our different products, but also contain one profile that can track all the products together, so that we can see how the Google site as a whole is performing. The setup on screen was achieved by creating one profile and duplicating it three times. To duplicate a profile, click the Add Website Profile link at the bottom of your existing profile list. On the new screen, select the second radio button as shown and choose the same domain that you used to create your first profile. You can find detailed steps outlined in the Analytics Help Center. Having duplicated your profiles, the next step is to ensure that they track the relevant data. Currently all of the profiles we have created share the same code and as such are tracking the same data. This screenshot shows the predefined filter for restricting data in the analytics.google.com profile to include data only from visitors that land on analytics.google.com. Be sure to enter the relevant domain in the domain field and to select the correct profile to add the filter to. Again, more in-depth details can be found in the Analytics Help Center. With our account structure in place, our next key step is to set up a goal, and if relevant, e-commerce tracking, so that we will be able to see our return on investment from our online marketing. For different websites, a goal or conversion can mean different things. A conversion or a goal occurs when a visitor completes a defined action on your site that you consider to be valuable. This can be making a purchase, downloading a file, or requesting additional information. Each website should have one or more goals and Google Analytics also allows you to track each type of goal. Why are conversions important? And why should you set up a goal? The simple calculation for ROI is your profit before advertising costs divided by the amount you spend on AdWords. So ROI equal profit divided by spend. When you track and monitor your ROI, you can make smarter decisions about your online ads and ultimately make your business more profitable. In this screenshot, we can see how this is applied to the AdWords reports in Analytics. We can see that this ad group has a good CTR and Analytics confirms that we are making a return from the money we invest in it. Finally, in this last section of this presentation, we'll cover a few of the issues that some users of Google Analytics face. It is important that you are making decisions based on accurate information so quickly crossing off the following should ensure that you do. This slide highlights some of the issues that face customers after they have set up Google Analytics. Some are due to omitting a step in the setup and some are due to the current setup of their website. In the next few slides we'll quickly address each of these and highlight what actions you can take to remedy the situation. Quickly access the AdWords report under the Traffic Sources category and ask yourself the first question. Are the visits in your AdWords campaigns report missing? Above we can see that the visit column shows a zero. 
Note that it can take up to 24 hours for data to appear, but if this number remains zero, check to see that you have turned on auto-tagging in your AdWords account preferences. Auto-tagging is a means of telling analytics that the visits came from AdWords and not to mistake it as coming from the natural search, as both sources of traffic come from a Google domain. If auto-tagging is applied and you still have zero visits, ask yourself the second question. Does your destination URL have a redirect? For auto-tagging to work correctly, when a visitor clicks on your app, there must be a GCLID parameter present for analytics to read. If this is removed via a redirect, then the visits will be mislabeled. To test this, simply open a new browser window. Type your URL with question mark GCLID equals test at the end and then hit enter. If the GCLID parameter remains, you do not have a redirect. However, if it is removed, you most likely have a redirect. Search the Analytics Help Center for more information on what you can do to work around this redirect. Question 3 asks, are your campaign names replaced by an entry called not set, as shown on this screenshot? One possible reason is that you are manually tagging your links, which is unnecessary, as auto-tagging negates the need to manually tag your links. A second possible reason, and one that could affect question 4, are the clicks, impressions and CPC data missing from the AdWords campaigns report? is related to cost data. Click on the edit button next to the profile in question and then edit the main website profile information to ensure that the cost source checkbox is ticked. By going through these simple checks you can be confident that you are making decisions based on more accurate data 